Today I'm going to show you how to put your face on a vase. So to get started we're going to open Google and we'll find a famous face, Abe Lincoln profile. Go to images and let's pick, how about this one? So we're going to save this image to the desktop and let's just call it Abe. Now in SolidWorks, let's start a new document, select part file and click OK. Now on the front plane, let's click on it and then go up to sketch. And then let's go to tools, sketch tools and sketch picture. Now let's browse to the desktop and find our Abe picture and insert it. Now the picture is going to need to be resized because we don't want to make a massive Abe. So let's use our scale tool to resize uh, old Abe. So on uh, the left side here lets me move the scale tool. I'll move it to the top of his head. And then the right side lets me rotate it down. I'm going to move that straight down under his chin. And when I let go, it'll ask me how big to make it. You can see 43 inches, that's a big Abe. So let's make it, say, 4 inches, and that will resize it. But if it disappears on you, use the Zoom to Fit tool. So either click this button or press F on the keyboard, and that will zoom old Abe back into view. And let's zoom out and find the origin here. We can see the origin's way down here. Um, we'll drag him closer to the origin just to make our lives a little easier. And we don't need to be perfect, but we can place the bottom of his chin pretty close to the origin and click check to accept the sketch picture. Um, now let's frame his face using some lines. So I'm going to go here, come out, go down just under his chin and back to the right and then hit escape to drop the line tool. Now up on the command manager let's find the spline tool and we're going to just trace around his face and so roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and just click the start and every so often click and just follow the outline of his head. And the closer together you click, the more control you have over the cur curve. Um, so if you need to do a sharp turn, it's good to kind of click closer together. So I like going around this eyebrow here, I'm going to do a lot of little lines. But if you end up in areas where there's not much curvature, it's, it's easier to sort of just click further out. Keep going around the nose and again we're always rolling the mouse wheel to zoom out and zoom back in to really make sure we're highlighting the area um, we're clicking. Now the higher the resolution the picture, the easier it is to really make out the uh, foreground from the background. Uh, again, pictures from the 1800s can tend to be a little grainy, um, but again, you don't need a ridiculously high resolution picture. You just need something that is clear enough that you can really tell the difference between the face and the background. And sometimes I find zooming back out to give yourself a little perspective helps so I can zoom back in to really get around the chin here and we'll finish this off so get just under here and click on the bottom and now hit escape to drop the tool now towards the top of the head I still need to finish off this piece here because we need to close contours to in order to actually finish the sketch so I have one completely closed contour with no overlapping lines. Um, 
which is important in order to be able to create the revolve. So I'm going to exit the sketch, go to the Features tab and click Revolve. And now I need to select the axis of revolution, which is going to be that vertical line here. Uh, but you notice it's, you can't really see it because of the, the sketch picture is in the way. So if I hit X and you're not sure where it is, um, I can click on the sketch picture and click Suppress. And now all I see is the sketch. If I go back to Revolve, now um, it, I can just basically select the, the vertical line here to create the, uh, the full Revolve. And I'll click the green check to accept it. Now if I move to my front view, uh, we can see this white space here was created using Abe's profile, and we see it, he's looking at himself, um, see it on both sides. If I want to make, change the size of the revolve, then I can go back in here and just drag this line. You can see I can make it bigger or smaller, but I'm pretty happy with the size that I originally made it, so I'll leave it there, hit exit sketch. It's not really going to be a vase unless we hollow this thing out. So to do that, let's go up to the shell command and select the top face and then show preview. And we're going to be able to see kind of what the shell is going to look like. Um, 0.1 inches is the uh, amount to shell it. If I do 0.2, for instance, and hit enter, you'll see I'm, I'm leaving more um, on the outside of the part, but I'm going to do 0.1 because I want to save material on my 3D printer. Click check. It's probably going to warn you because we have some uh, tight curvature from the, uh, the splines. Um, we'll check this in a second, but let's just hit OK and see what it does. And from the top of the part, we can see it has hollowed it out. But to make sure we don't have any really weird geometry, I'm going to use the section view and it defaulted to the front plane but I could select the top plane and you you know you can grab these um, handles here to section through however you'd like um, in our example we really just want to section from the front plane and I'll click check and then I will move back to my front view and I can see I have pretty good uh, geometry here nothing that couldn't be printed it is a little bit tight down here and you might have some weird support material in that area so if we want to I can go back to my shell and in my multi thickness setting select the bottom face here and then maybe just bump this up a little bit and click check and again I need to accept that um, warning message and now we have um, something that might be printed a little easier so I'll get rid of my section view and I will save this, go to File, Save As. Now it's always a good idea to save this as a SolidWorks file type um, in case you want to make changes later. So I'll call this Abe and make sure I have a part file selected and hit Save. And then to 3D print it, go back to File, Save As, and change from part file to STL. And we'll call that Abe.STL. And you can see I now have a fully 3D printable vase that will look like Honest Abe once it comes off the printer.